have you ever wondered why some form of marketing used concepts such as, you know, um, design, visually striking colors, shapes, storytelling to pass their messages? Apparently, there's a reason why. And on today's episode of Creative Lounge, we will be finding out the reason why. I'm Ahmed Mohamed Bello, your favorite Duke on your favorite show. And with me today on Creative Lounge is Jaco Okueku. You're welcome to Creative Lounge. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. I'm really looking forward to having an exciting conversation. It's really, really nice having you here. Pleasure's all mine. And you look really great. Thank you. When you invite me somewhere, I have to come correct. So tell us a, you know, a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name is Jack Wakweku. Um, I'm from Delta State. Um, I kind of call myself, not like I kind of, I call myself a storyteller. Um, okay. Because for me, at my core, I've always been fascinated by stories. Um, but it wasn't a path I thought I was going to take. Um, I went into school. I studied computer science. And, but you know, when you, from day one, I knew it wasn't me. Okay. But then it was just one of those things I felt like, oh, it was a nice course to do. And, mm -hmm. But what that experience taught me was knowing exactly who I wasn't. Like going to school and doing something that wasn't me made me more convinced about the things that I, I don't want. Okay. And the marketing... How did, I, how did I even get into it? Um, so when I was done with school, um, I was trying to get work, and I met, I met a guy, it was my dad's friend, um, his name is um, Donald Etim, and he had a conversation with me, and he was trying to, so he was, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do next, and I told him I wanted to do IT. Mm. At the end of the conversation, he told me, um, with the kind of mind that you have, I feel like you should go into marketing. Okay. And I was like, I'm not really sure what I want to do with my life right now. Um, mm. If you think that's the best thing for me, please, right? So I get into multi-choice as a mark, like I go multi-choice for NYC in Lagos. And like two weeks into the job, I just realized what this man said, right? Okay. I've never felt out at home in any environment, let alone an environment I was just in for the first time. Um, I didn't know why things were done, but like in terms of like understanding the how, it was quick for me. Um, so I just got really good interest in it. I wanted to understand it, learn more about it. And it was one of the first things that actually really felt natural for me, I feel. And um, I feel like what has happened to me over the years is like the feeling has evolved. Um, and then my understanding of myself and mm -hmm. like developing some skill sets. So I feel, I feel so much more at home in this space. And Still. that's, that's then the need for you to start up your own um, advertising agency. Yeah, um, so with starting up my own advertising agency, um, a couple of things happened to me. Okay. Um, so when I was working at Multi-Choice, um, we, we were working with an agency, um, Prima Garnet, um, okay. OGV, in, in Ikeja. And I was, part of my job was to be a liaison. So I would go to the agencies to, mm. to, to work on marketing campaigns for okay. Multi-Choice. And, and I used to have more fun. Mm. doing the work when I went to the agency. I enjoyed the agency side of things. And um, I, like, I remember the first time I went for a debrief session and they brought the client's brief and like, we sat on a table and we're dissecting it. And like, that experience, I just felt like, oh my God. And I remember there was a guy, the creative director at the time, and like, the way he picked holes and all these different ideas. I was just like, oh my God, I would love to own something like this. Mm. And then I think at the time I, I stumbled on a show, Mad Men. I don't okay. know. Yeah, Mad Men, if, if you're an advertising buff, if you want to do yeah. anything marketing, communication, I feel like you should definitely watch it out. Um, so Mad Men really inspired me. There's a character in that show called Donald Draper. Okay. Donald Draper was the creative director at, mm. at the show. And like the opening scene is a guy in mm. a bar. He has his pen mm. and he's just like jotting like taglines. Okay. Right? And then a bartender comes to him and he asks the guy a question, mm. why do you use this particular product? Okay. And then the guy said something to him and he wrote it down. And like that whole experience just started to open my mind up to the reason like behind the marketing is you have to tap into people's why. You have to, and I realized that like marketing can be, advertising and communication can be more than just selling. Mm. It's an opportunity to build some connection and, and when you approach it from a consumer-centric perspective, yeah. like, it's endless what you can do. So, um, you've been doing marketing, you've been doing advertising. What is creativity in advertising? Hmm. What is creativity? Um, I feel 
creativity is being able to be true to what it is that you're trying to say okay. and being able to at the same time mm. express it in a way that like you don't lose yourself in the process mm. right um, I feel like creativity is when you 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 see these boundaries and then you realize that like these boundaries aren't necessarily cages but they're meant to like guide you in some capacity and when you're able to like play on those borders of boundaries and like create something that like would wow someone mm -hmm. or just even like putting in a, a different spin to something that already exists mm -hmm. i feel like people generally associate creativity to a level of complexity but sometimes the most simple things right i feel like creativity is simplicity mixed with some form of like complexity but then in a way that like you connect. I feel like I feel like for you to truly be creative, you have to be able to connect with your art and almost be like one mm -hmm. with your art. I know you said something when we were talking behind the scene about how um, there's a metaphysical component to that. Yeah. There's a lot of energy mm -hmm. involved. There's a, because I feel for you to be truly creative, you have to embody yourself, right? You have to come into this art, come into this craft, and just zone into it. And, and what creativity is, it's not really your mind working. Mm. It's more about something deeper, right? It's like, it's like a feeling that you get. Mm. It's like, uh, for instance, I, I know you write. I know sometimes like you, you have this feeling and you know that you just have to put this thing down, right? Yeah. I think that is where, that's, that's how I see creativity. I don't think it's one word or one phrase. It's just a flow of constant connection with you and your heart. Mm. Well, do you think there's a relationship between creativity and you know, marketing and advertising? Oh, for sure, mm. for sure, because we have to like, I feel like we're marketing and advertising at this core, we understand that we're social yeah. animals. Um, so social animals were very emotional as well. So the, the connection there is like with marketing and you have to be able to, to evoke those emotions in people. And for you to invoke those emotions in people, sometimes you have to do it in a way that is subtle. Okay. And that's where creativity comes in. Creativity mm -hmm. gives you, a, like, as you trying to find a subtle way of expressing a very complex idea, yeah. right? Um, creativity is you um, realizing that this topic is too tough for, for me to just go directly, maybe I sprinkle a bit of humor, right? Because when people are laughing, they're relaxed. I can just yeah. slide in the serious messages. Creativity is knowing that like maybe the best thing for this thing is just plain black and white. I don't mm -hmm. need too many colors. So, and when you're thinking about advertising and the end goal is to like evoke those emotions, right? And get people to do something that you want them to do, either buy yeah. a product or um, connect with the brand more. Yeah. So definitely there's a strong link between like creativity and advertising. And I feel like m mostly ad agencies are, are are judged on that, okay. right? Ability to be creative, right? Um, but then I feel like creative isn't a literal thing. I feel right. So creative creativity isn't like oh, there's a, there's one way to be creative. Yeah. Like once one, once you say that, that means that isn't creativity. Creativity is being able to see this mm -hmm. and add perspective to it, your own perspective, right? Yeah. So in marketing, you have to be able to do that. So definitely, I feel creativity and marketing and advertising go hand in hand. Okay. You know, um, I've seen some ads where, you know, they use very visually striking colors, maybe yellow to pass a message, or they use um, very short slogans, right? you know, to pass a message, or they use certain shapes. Right. Is there a reason why? Yeah, like, the truth about it is like, it's, it's, it's the way the mind associates. Okay. Um, so for instance, right, like there's this thing that's so random about like sales, yeah. for instance. Um, like the concept of sales is making you feel like there's a bargain here, you're saving up or some, on something and there's a deal. So mm -hmm. if you notice sales, there, there are a couple of ways that they do it. First of all, it's red. Right? Okay. So red is that like, yo, there's something happening here, you have to pay attention, right? Like if you don't pay attention, you might miss out, mm -hmm. red. Also in terms of the pricing, right? 
they'll tell you, for instance, oh, this thing used to be 10 pounds, right? Mm. And then you would see it at nine pounds 99, right? Mm. A lot of that 99 is just making, even if it's just one, the fact that you feel like you're, you're getting something better than the, the usual, you're getting something that is, you're paying something that is less than the whole. Instead of paying $10, you're paying like nine, nine 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 right yeah. you know what i mean there's a psychology behind it because you have to understand that like there's a lot of psychology behind marketing right so when you're doing your when you're looking at shapes looking at colors you have to think about what feelings do these colors evoke um for instance um with banks especially in abroad it's like there's a setting sound that they once you walk into the bank so there's there's a whole lot of sensory branding going on okay. right? from the scent Right, so there's mm. a way that there's a kind of scent that you go the bank in. Gives. Yeah, so okay. part of the thing about it is like banking experiences tend to be very tense, right? So the idea of the banking hall and what the banking hall is trying to do is to make you as calm as possible. You hear the music is is very soft. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah, because I know you're coming here to fight. <laughs> when you hear the music, you calm down. Yeah. When you inhale the scent, right, perfectly crafted, right. You have people that do this to do research. What kind of feeling does this scent evoke? Does it remind me of my childhood? Does it, do you know what I mean? So people are very particular about then the color. Is it warm? Do you know what I mean? Do I want, and then you have to also think about who is your target market, right? Okay. So, so for me, it's like, you have to approach it from a um, consumer centric approach. So mm -hmm. when you're creating the shapes, the colors, you have to, so in some cultures, colors mean different things, right? Okay. So you have to be mindful of what this color means in this culture. So I feel like, Cultural context plays a very big role. Mm -hmm. um, understanding like human psychology okay. ties into like what kind of shape. Um, when you start to approach it from a perspective of trying to understand your end target, mm -hmm. um, the content that you put out or the imaging that you put out are things that they can relate to. Okay. You have to put that, you have to be very mindful because what happens to a lot of people is they're not deliberate unintentionally about what it is that what message what their message is saying mm. they assume from the business perspective right it makes sense from your business doing your research and doing what your numbers are saying but then you have to be mindful of who's going to receive this messaging mm. what is what who are they like you have to be able to profile your customers and then when you profile them you know the right colors to use in what cultural context okay i have more questions to ask we'll go on a short break and when we come back We'll continue from where we start. We'll be right back. Don't go nowhere. Welcome back, and it's still Creative Lounge, and with me here is Jack Paul. We're talking about creativity and in advertising. Yeah, so before we went on break, we were talking about um, colors, you know, shapes, slogans, and how they pass messages. Right. But in an advertising firm, you must have a team right. of people. What are the kind of creatives you have in this team? Um, so for me, it's like, I feel like one of the first roles to have is a, a creative director, okay. right? Um, a creative director provides like direction. Okay. Um, then for the creative director's um, ideas to be implemented, like you said, you need a team. Um, you, I, I'm, I'm very big on research okay. and I feel like you need to have um, a research, um, some, a lot of research and development, someone that's is, is good in that. Um, you also have to have some writers people that can write um, copy, copywriters, and people that can write, like handle content for social media as well. Mm. Definitely have to have like a graphic designer, visual artist, um, someone that's good with like, like turning like words into designs visually. Okay. Um, someone that's artistic and um, also you have to have um, photography, right? Okay. Imagery is a big, back in the day, um, old agencies used to have like actual like artists Right when like the the build the billboards were drawn before yeah. we got yeah so they used to have actual artists but now that role has evolved to someone that has digital skills digital right skills. so someone that can like create designs because now um, for an age um, a lot of brands 
I've realized that like um, social media is, 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 is about you moving with the trend, right? So mm -hmm. you have to have someone on, on ground that can create designs very quickly if something is happening, right? For instance, now you want to do like Black Friday. Mm -hmm. You need someone that can help you turn. And then also for the research, you need to know um, what kind of um, data you're working with, what kind of demographic, like what it is they need, what kind of price points should you be looking at for your, your deals and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. You also need like videography for sure, um, okay. someone that is like great, um, and but then you also need like an editor, right? Um, a video editor, um, mm -hmm. because a lot of the content now, because of reels, you have um, you you need that. Another um, thing that's like for the bigger firms, they have an account um, officer. An account officer is almost like the liaison between um, the clients mm -hmm. and the creative team. So your job as, a, as an account officer is to get the brief from the client and sit, um, sit up, sit with your team, the creative director is there and the team. And then there's a concept called a debrief where you go over the brief, what are the customer's needs, what do you need exactly. to get done. And then, um, so the, the account officer is almost like the glue between you and the client. So he has to be okay. able to um, understand the client's needs mm -hmm. um, and then interpret those needs in a way that the creative team would understand. So as an expert in, in this field, I know you must think a lot every day, you must mm -hmm. do a lot of thinking. Right. How do you come up with ideas? Do you have routine you? So for me, is um, I'm, I'm very inspired by experiences. Okay. Um, I'm very inspired by like encounters, conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and one, one thing I try to do a, a lot as well is read. Yeah. Um, I read in a way that like, so I, I feel like reading opens your mind. Um, so you're, you're able to see more possibilities when you read. Um, and so for me, how I get ideas or stuff is maybe I just see something that I said. Right. And I feel like maybe this thing, if it was said differently, it would evoke a different emotion. Right. I just write it down what I feel that that would be. And okay. I probably come back to it later. Right. Um, so what I find, what I, I think for me, what I've learned is I don't put pressure on myself for mm -hmm. the original idea. Okay. The original idea for me is a raw material. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't expect too much from raw material. Right. Like you process it, you refine it, you do whatever you need to do. So for me is, once I get these thoughts, for me it's raw. I just put it down and then I come back to it, right? But then I spend my day mm -hmm. using that thought process as a, as the, it's almost like context for things that are happening to me. Okay. So when this is happening to me, I try to like slide that in and see where it is. So mm -hmm. when I come back to it is the, the original idea is so much richer because I've added some more context to it. Um, okay. And I, I listen to music. I do some, I listen to some classical music. But one thing I find as well is um, and my mind moves quicker when my body feels lighter, okay. right? So I try to um, exercise, I try to be active, mm -hmm. um, and I'm trying to sleep well, um, resting helps as well. So my next question for you is very practical. Okay. I want you to do something a little for me. Okay. Imagine I'm a brand, I come to you as a client and I tell you, I'm a brand. Okay. You know, brand me. So um, the real question here is, how would you decide what colors to use for me? You know, the kind of um, designs to use for someone like me, if okay. I were to be a brand, I come to you and tell you brand me. So before, for me, I, tr I, I think before we get to the point of like even saying what colors, what language, what messaging is for me is, mm. why are you in business? Okay. That's the first question I want to know. Like, I want to know why. Okay. Um, so one of the things that you understand is like, the why in some ways directs the how. Right. Yeah. So I want to know why you're in business. I want to know um, why, um, what gap you, 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 you identified in the market and how you're trying to fit it. Mm -hmm. I want to know um, who your clients, who you, who you, what the visual of your client is like, right? Mm -hmm. Because for me as well, it's, if we're going to be communicating for you, right? We have to understand what, what we're communicating and who we're communicating that to, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, the first one is I would do an analysis trying to find out, figure out why right. you're in business. Um, mm -hmm and what it is that your business stands for. Okay. Um, then, when, after you understand that, um, the next step is to say, okay, where, right? Okay. Where's, your, where's your business now, right? Like, where's your business? What, what do you have available to you? What have you done? What have you, you done? Because sometimes, like a lot of, one of the things that happens with working in this space is like, we tend to act from a lot of assumption. We mm. think we know 
right? Um, yeah. Without, so for me, like the first step has to be fact finding, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding the client, understanding what the client needs, and um, how to then you have a better sense of what to do. So when you're done with um, analyzing that, um, the next step is when you find out where the client is and where they're trying to go, you can then start to say, okay, this is the kind of message I feel that we should be using, right? So when we agree on a message, it's like, okay, so how do we convey this message, mm -hmm. right? So what are the best, um, what kind of language are we going to do? Then you start to think about the color. The colors as, as well, they're very tied to emotion. So what kind of emotions do we want our message to evoke? Okay. Um, if it's what kind of business as well, there's some businesses that are serious. You can't use colors that are too bright. Um, mm -hmm. There are businesses that are fun, kiddies, like you can use like bright colors that pop. Um, okay. And then also you, you can, sometimes you can have a, a, like the business can be more seriously and corporate -y for like tough men. And then you can give like something with like a bit of brown, wooden feel, do you know what I mean? Like that plays into like the personality of um, who your target market is. Okay. Because what you have to think about is like, your clients or your target audience needs to be able to see themselves in your marketing, right? So, because what you're trying to do is, so I tend to approach it from, um, I'm trying to build like a tribe of people okay. that will be for this business. Most of the big businesses, that mm. what they do is that they, they don't focus too much on their unique selling points, yeah. right? They try to create what they call a, a unique buying tribe, a buying tribe of people that would just focus on buying your products, right? And these guys feel like they are part of your products. They feel like they're part of your business. Mm -hmm. So you have to think about those people and how you want them to feel as a community. And then you create your branding to suit that. So okay. the only, for me, is like you have to do your research first, understand why, understand where they are and where they want, where they want to go. And that would really inform all the different things that you use. Isn't it funny how advertising encompasses so many things? Take, for example, advertising encompasses um, visual storytelling. Yeah. Uh, it encompasses creative writing, it encompasses music, right. it encompasses acting. Right. Like the skip makers, you see? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. You know, it has so many things surrounding it. Yeah, because like advertising was built on creative expression, mm. using creative expression as a means to like sell products, yeah. right? So, and now it's like there's a wider range of creative expressions, yeah. right? Like, um, it's, it's, really, it's really interesting and like, some of like the best ads you can still remember the songs do you know what i mean like yeah. the, the music is such a key factor in, in, in the storytelling advertising for me is just generally like it's at its core storytelling for a purpose really storytelling to evoke emotion and an emotion that would drive a call to action that would make people buy us but then at its core it is storytelling right it's just storytelling that is more commercial than you but and, and but then the truth about it is like advertising is like it's as old as time, mm. right? Like even in terms of like we we look at when like archaeologists go digging, they see like things that people have written in the wall for thousands of years, like talking about like so many different stuff. Like it's it's as old as I, I, um, advertising is also about like being able to identify yourself or being identified, right? And then like writing things on your walls, on your doors, for people to know that like you are part of here or they can come here and get this particular thing. Um, so it's, it's just really part of um, our way of life. And, okay. and, and the people that drive it um, are the creatives, like at their core. Mm -hmm. But then because of the business side of it, right, you need people to manage creatives, yeah. right? So that's, that's where, that's what really differentiates it from like the actual complete creative expression mm -hmm. is the fact that you need what you call an ad man mm -hmm. to like control or put the creatives in check. Interesting. So to be great in this field, to be successful in this field, what are the best practices one should, you know, keep up with? Um, so the thing about like, um, this field is the work typically speaks for itself right um yeah. a good ad once you see it you know it mm -hmm. and you feel like you want to get the person that that did it if you mm -hmm. can afford it um so i feel like another thing that's very important is you have to be you have to constantly be researching you have to constantly be researching um okay. especially now with um with like technology right um people are able to do two things faster because of ai yeah. um 
So I feel like for you to be successful is like you have you have to be flexible enough to learn new things, learn, relearn, unlearn, as the case may be. Um, because what you find is like, uh, for instance, now it's like AI first came out, people were very reluctant. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Before you know, it's like now. If you're, if you're being reluctant, the guy that you're competing against is not being reluctant. He's using it. He's, he's able to, like, churn out, like, um, content quicker, writing quicker. For instance, like, people have um, different apps that help with, like, their correction, their grammars and stuff like that. You are trying to correct it manually. They feed it into the, um, the system and, like, yeah, this is for them. It's like they have, like, research. Um, so what I always would say is, like, invest in technology um, because technology speeds up the process, right? But then don't invest in technology to the point that you, you miss out actual learning and actual studies. Because yeah. I feel like that was the, the fear initially about AI is that is it going to completely erase free thinking? If, if instead of you thinking, you just put a bunch of queries into an app and then it gives you answers. And then I feel like your brain is going to, you're going to be under, underutilizing your brain. So I think that's the only thing that people will worry about. But then it's just about using it with sense and within reason, mm. um, I feel. So I, um, I feel like you have to definitely um, speed up on technology, read a lot, because um, advertising is very contextual, right? So you have to be able to have a broad understanding of cultural context and know what's obtainable in this region versus what's obtainable here. Because um, sometimes like this, the issues of sensitivity, maybe you mistakenly go and say a word that is forbidden in this place. So you, you have to be very vast in cultural like um, awareness. You have to know, you have to read. Um, about Thank you so much. Thank um, you so much. It was really insightful hearing you say all these you know, wonderful things. You're a very smart man. I appreciate that. Thank and I've, I've learned a lot from you today. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I've learned a lot as well. Um, I also want to say it's like I've enjoyed like your line of questioning. Um, there's a lot. I can tell there's a lot of thought process behind it. And I appreciate that. You heard what you said. Um, to be you know, great in this field, to be successful in this field, you need to do a lot of research, upskill yourself. You know, AI is here and it's going to be here for a very, very long time. So if you're not using it yet, please try use it and use it for something good. As creatives, you know, advertisement is one great field that we all can find ourselves very useful. You know, graphic designers, visual artists, storytellers, writers, singers, voiceover artists. This is just one great field where you can be very useful. And I think you should be in it. This is how much you can take today. It's been a very um, insightful, time listening to Jack Paul. You know, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Join us same time, same station next week. I remain Ahmed Mohammed Bello. Bye for now.